Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And today, a little bit of a show and tell, an unboxing, and some shop infrastructure. I have here the new Cobra Max from Anycubic. Uh, you may have seen me put together the Viper that we had before, but this is their new machine, still has auto leveling and all that. But what's neat is it's almost a 15 inch by 15 inch bed, I think by 15 inches tall on the, on the Z. So we're gonna unbox this, put it together, and we'll do a test print and see how this works. We're gonna be able to do some real cool stuff if uh, everything works out, because a 15 by 15 bed is pretty big. I'm gonna take this out of the box. I'm gonna gnaw all the pieces out and put them on the table because I don't have much room in here. So I figured if I take all the pieces out and lay them out and then we'll start putting it together. All right, I'm putting this clip in here because originally I had planned to assemble the printer, uh, do some fine tuning that's very important to it and then do some test prints. But that ended up being pretty long and I don't like my videos to be more than 30 minutes, 40 minutes the longest. So I think we're gonna make this into a three part where in this video, I'm gonna show you how it all goes together and in the second part, we'll do all the fine tuning uh, that you can do to make this print really good. And these tips also apply to other 3D printers as well. So it's not just uh, indigenous to this particular printer. And then part three, we'll do some uh, cool test printing and see how this thing really works. We'll put it through its paces. So now let's move on to the assembly. Well, so far it's, it's packed it pretty good. Look at the size of that bill plate. Oh, I was off. It's 17 inches by 16 inches. Not perfectly square, but 16 by 17. That's a lot of build space. Display screen. Just the plate by itself. All right, here's your normal stuff you get with the 3D printer. You got some PLA, your power cord, some grease. USB cable, assorted nuts and screws, spool holder, and it is packed very well. And it also comes with a head injury. That hurt. All right, two rods that flew out and hit me in the head when I took it off. And let's see if I can... There's the bottom of it. Big old beast. Here's the carriage assembly or the for the Z. I'll put that over here. So out comes the base. And let's see, there's some more packing stuff. More packing stuff. Okay, so here is the base. Right off the bat, I can see some features that are pretty neat right here. Power supply and everything is all down below. And here's what I want to draw your attention to. Is right here. There's two knobs, and what they do is they adjust the attention on the uh, belts right here. So you don't have to do anything fancy if your belts become a little loose. I guess in case your 3D printer loses weight, you can, you can tighten them up and... Okay, a lot of pictures here, so I guess we're gonna do this Ikea style. Starts right off with us putting in the cross member. Okay, so like I said, step one is we're going to put that frame in. And we're going to need some M5 by 45 screws. These screws right here, dead space, and some thread. They're the 45 millimeter that they want us to use. Now we're going to get the frame, which is right here. Okay, so with the tightening knobs up here, Yep, so the hot end right here goes towards there and it slides on right in there. I'm going to move this wire out of the way. Hmm, this may be a two person. Oh, I know how to do this. 
will hang. Fire this off on here on the desk right here. So I have access and then we'll put this up here. Then we can take this. That worked. So I'm going to take the other one. Now it's just a matter of spinning the Allen wrench around until the frame tightens down. Because that's already tightened up pretty good so far. So I have this one side in, so now I'll just flip this around. I'll do the other side. Sweating a little here. It's um, the middle of July. What is this? July uh, 22nd, 23rd. Exact date, excuse me, but out here on the East Coast, specifically Pennsylvania, we're experiencing a heat wave. It is 101 today, so the air in the cave is having a little bit of a trouble keeping up with the heat. And uh, one of the things that is showing is right in here where this frame fits into this bar here. There is a groove in this bar, and it wants to make sure that you get this into that groove when you tighten them up, which I did. All right, so now that we have the frame on here, you need to take these supporting struts here, and one's gonna go here, and the other gets mounted. There is a hole down in here that a screw gets held on there with, but you also need one of these thick plastic washers that they give us, and we need an M5 by 28 inch screw right here. So let's see how this goes. Uh, the screw goes obviously through the end of this supporting strut and then the thick plastic nut goes in here. So far this assembly has been really, really easy. Now you're going to need the smaller, we give you a whole different, all different sizes of uh, Allen wrenches here. So you're going to get the second largest. So here's a close-up of where this bar goes. So I want to show you. So here's the locking nut right here. So you just kind of spin this tube. And you can until it matches up for the slot here. And you just take your I need a nut. Now these are locking nylon washers. So you don't need a lock washer on here, but you put the screw through here and put that through this slot. Then you take a washer, put that on here. And then you put on the lock washer. And like I said, I'm using my tool right here. If you have one of these, it'll make it a little easier. And this is a eight millimeter hex knot right here. That's nice and tight. It firms this real tight up here. Now, as you can see, there's this lock washer. So we spin this down. And then we're going to take the wrench that came with the kit right here. And you're just going to tighten that down. You don't have to give it a lot, just a few turns. And then you're going to do the same thing. Literally going to do the same thing down here. Take this lock nut right here and do that. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, so now we have the frame in here. We got these support struts all in here. This is real nice. This is not going to wobble at all when it prints. And let's see what they want us to do next.
it looks like we're going to move on and put the screen on here. So we have the touch screen right here. It's going to go, <coughs> excuse me, if you're looking at it this way, it's going to be on the right. There is a hole right here where I guess the screw is going to go, so it slides right in there. And that's going to get held into place with uh, M5 by 14. It's only one of them, so that's this one right here. Hello. There's only one of them right here, and that's this right here. So it's going to go right into here. This is really, again, it's taking me a little bit longer because I'm filming it for you guys and I'm doing it, you know, backwards. But this is going together really easy. They want us to install the glass. <laughs> you know, <laughs> look, you got to cut on some sl slack, but I, I don't think you're going to be able to see this. But it says install the grass plate. Pretty sure they meant a glass plate. So here is that glass plate that we had. All right, now included, now that we have this glass plate sitting on it, there's some clips right here that you slide on here. Oh, you got to take the plastic off first. You know what? I'm not putting the glass or grass plate on here yet. Um, simply because I'm afraid of dropping something on and breaking it. So that looks like it can be added at any time. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go to the next step, which is, <coughs> excuse me, putting together the spool holder. If they want you to go right in front, uh, it just simply clips on right here um, they want you to put the on there so it just slides right onto there well that was easy wow now we're going to get to the wiring so there are some wire ties here so let's let's take them off When you're doing this, you want to be really careful you're not catching any wires. There's some cable management clips. So it looks like there's a clip that goes between here. Oh, you know what? This might be where we just need to turn the machine around. So here is the stepper motor and everything that controls the feeding of the filament. There is a, looks like a red ribbon cable here connector and there's one right on top of here on the print head. Cables are packed under the heat bed. Carefully pull them out. So they are wire tied in there. You're not going to be able to see this, but trust me, there's, there's cable under here. Here are the two cables. So these two cables, they actually go underneath like this, out the side of the machine. And they're two different sizes. The two cables go up here. The shorter one goes to the extruder right here. And the longer cable goes to the hot end right there. The directions, I will say this, are not very clear on how to run the cabling. So I'm guessing at this, um, pretty much along with you, the pictures aren't very clear. Now we gotta do some wiring of the, of the motors. And those, that's actually pretty easy. So here's some connectors right here. And they're all very well labeled. Uh, this one is like Z right. This one is LCD right here, LCD. Like I said, this one is Z right. So that probably goes right in here. And we'll take this one and we'll just... Now we'll take the one right here. This goes right into the back of the LCD. Uh, I'm assuming over here. Yeah, this is labeled ZL or Z left. So that's going to go right into here. 
and this one is labeled it's not labeled at all so where the heck does that go oh right here right here in front of this what is this the right uh, or the left stepper motor right here there's a small connector right here and that's where this one goes in right there that was simple Everything's been fairly simple. Like I said, the biggest confusion so far is really, and has really been where, which one of these ribbon cables goes to where, but, you know, obviously this is the shorter of the two, so it can only travel up to here. I certainly can't go over to this head here, so the longer cable goes here. Now it says, secure the print head cable into the bracket with the R-type cable clamp. These are the R-type cable clamps right here. And the reason why I overlooked them is due to this, look at that's about how thick they are. But what they want is you want, they want you to put this print cable into here. So let's go get a Allen wrench, loosen this up. As you can see, you can see how small that clamp is. Now they want us to put cabling in here is kind of folded up like that and then we're going to put it right back in here so now this will having this clamp in here like I said I was worried about this thing flopping all around so this this solidify or not solidifies it but firms up a little bit and keeps that cable away from everything now, they included some wire ties in here. And what they want us to do is right in here is the uh, filament tube. And they just want you to secure the print head cable. I'm not going to make it real tight, but just to go that in there. All right, you remember me taking the foam out from behind these wheels right here. They just want me to shake this. To see if it's loose and it's really not I don't think it is it's in there pretty solid so that cable clamp you saw me put on back here I'm just feeding some excess cable through it okay so now the print head moves doesn't really wobble if it did wobble you can use there's some concentric screws on the back right here you would turn them basically if you know what they are they're the screws that are off centered so as you turn them it would take up the gap if there is any but there is none right here and it wants us to check the belts now on here to see how they are actually by feeling these you know they, they you don't want to be super tight but you don't want any play in them and believe it or not on this x-axis right here i did smooth them up a little bit or smooth them up i did tighten them up a little bit you just turn this counterclockwise for tightening counterclockwise counterclockwise for loosening so that's good now i'm going to check the did i say what and I'm going to do the same thing down here on this plate. This one feels a little tight. I don't know if you heard that squeaking or not in there, but now it moves really good. Yeah, this one was a little too tight. Actually, I can tighten that one a little bit. The next part is going to be leveling it. But before we get to that part... Now I think is a good time to put the glass on. And let's take the protective plastic off of here. Look at the size of this build volume. I just can't get over this. Okay, so they included some clips along with this. Now here's a close-up of the clips for the heat bed, and I wanted to show you this because this is very important. If you notice, this side is completely flat, okay? And if we flip it over, you'll notice that this 
portion here is a little smaller than the other side, and there's an angle right here. There's a bevel piece that sticks out. This has to go underneath the heat bed. Now the reason I mention this is because it's very important. Uh, I put two clips on the back and I put two clips on the front. I did not put any on the side. Now when I was doing research for this printer, uh, a couple people complained about their heat bed not working. And what they finally drilled it down to was the fact that how I showed you in that last clip that this side that goes you know, on top of the bed is a little wider. People were putting these clips on upside down. So the angled part was actually on top and this long flap spot was on the bottom. The problem with that is, is there's electrical traces that run all along this heat bed. Okay, and they're closer on the sides of the heat bed than the front. So if you turn this over, this metal part right here sticks farther into the heat bed on the bottom than you know, the way it is in this orientation. So you can actually short out the heat bed. So that's the, uh, a good, good tip here I want to tell you is when you put the clips on, two clips, front and, or how many of you want to do, but make sure the clips are only front and back and that the wide portion right here is up top. Um, some people had had no problem with putting the clips in this orientation on the side, but you know what? I don't feel any flex in the plate. So if you're why risk it, I'm just going to put two, two clips here and then uh, put two clips in the back right here and that'll be it. And here we are at the end of part one of our three-part series on the Cobra Max. Uh, like I said, part one is going to be assembly, part two is going to be fine-tuning it, and part three we're really going to do some, um, some printing on it to see exactly how well it does. Uh, the assembly of this thing was simple. Just like their Viper, uh, a couple screws here, a couple screws there, some wire ties, and, you know, poof, you know, it's, it's assembled. I, I couldn't ask for anything simpler, especially with a printer of this size. So I'll put a link below to where you can purchase this. Uh, I hope this helped you um, make your decision. Um, and if you've already had one, maybe this helped you uh, along with putting it together. But, but if you already have one, I think parts two and three will be interesting, especially part two is where we fine tune this, where I can show you to how you can really dial this in so your prints look really cool. So until next time, like always, thanks for stopping by the Baker's Cave. I really appreciate it.